And we are heading out to a Danish bakery for breakfast this morning. <laughs> They're hidden down in the basement. Everybody. We are up bright and early. It is Thursday morning and it's nearly 8.30. We are all feeling a little bit tired but hopefully managed to recover as much sleep as possible last night. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> You're in the back of my vlog. Um, and we are heading out to a Danish bakery for breakfast this morning. Surprisingly, we've managed to get everybody out of bed on time, putting shoes on now, apart from Paige. <laughs> Um, but all of us are here and we're gonna go, but yeah, I know, I was like, to be honest, I'm surprised we got this many people, like, yeah, I, I, I thought there'd be about half area. of us, but everyone but Paige, so 9 out of 10 show, we're gonna bring some stuff back for her though, and then we're gonna go to Rosenberg Castle today, because we didn't manage to do it yesterday, and then Tuli, I hope I pronounced that correctly, I keep asking Tim for the correct pronunciations, which is basically a Danish amusement park, so really excited for that. But I'm not sure, I'm a bit iffy on roller coasters, so I'll have to see what I can do. I, well, I like a roller coaster, but not so much like a claw ride or a windmill or anything that turns me upside down, so I don't know, who knows, maybe I'll push myself and try something new today. Tell a lie, I thought we had 9 out of 10, we've got 8 out of 10, Jacob also didn't make it. I was told he was awake, but clearly not, or he went back to sleep because he is not with us. We've done a head count, just to make sure we are missing two for sure. After a very tasty breakfast, an almond croissant, you guys know me by now, we headed to our first destination of the day and that was Rosenborg Castle. We actually did two things on this day, so we did the castle in the morning and then went to Tierley Amusement Park in the afternoon slash evening, but because I have so much footage, I've decided to split it out into two different vlogs. So stay tuned for all of that in my next vlog. But for now, let me show you guys around the castle. So we started by strolling through the gardens. It was so pretty and there was a lot to take in. There were actors dressed in period style costumes wandering around the grounds, which was really nice to see, especially when they interacted with little children. And then we headed into the castle itself starting with Christian IV's winter room, which was covered in a large collection of artwork and statues and very grand furniture, clocks, music boxes, you name it. And there were actually movable tiles in the corners of the room that had hidden secret music channels. This basically meant that musicians could play music in a separate room and this music would travel through these holes in the wall and play into your room filled with guests so you didn't need to take up any space in the room you were hosting your party 
with all of the musicians and their equipment. After that, we moved into Christian IV's writing room. As you can imagine, as an English student, I was so overwhelmed and in awe of this room. He had a huge gilt writing table. Now, let me tell you, I wish I'd had one of these during my time as an undergrad English student because I would have loved to have written my essays on a golden table like this. But unfortunately, my budget wouldn't stretch that far. <laughs> Following on from the writing room, we went into the not so glamorous toilet, but as you can see it was definitely worth filming because the whole bathroom was covered in these beautifully detailed tiles. Then we headed into the dark room which had these creepy wax figures of Frederick III, the Queen and their son Prince George, and there was also a prank chair in there. Yes, that's right, a pranking chair. It was known as the trouser wetting chair and you could grab a person with grapples hidden in the armrests and soak them with water that was hidden in a holder in the backrest, which we all found really funny to think that even back in those days, people were still pranking one another. So this is a really cool like mouthpiece that you could use to talk to somebody on the other side. It's kind of like, you know, that um, cup and string sort of thing that you do as a kid. How cool is that? Before heading up to the first floor, we walked along the stone corridor where there was a large painting that showed the procession in front of Copenhagen Castle, where Frederick III was hailed as the hereditary king. There was also a large painting or hanging of Christian IV's genealogical chart, which basically had his familial history on it and all of the different family crests. As we headed into the first room on the first floor, we were greeted by this huge walnut cupboard that really took centre stage in this room. It actually contained a small music box inside of it and was able to play similar music to what they would have played at the time because it had been recently restored. Now for any of you that have seen my Paris vlogs, this room might look slightly familiar. This is the mirror cabinet room inspired by Versailles, which I did vlog on my trip to the Palace of Versailles. And you can really see how this all glass room takes inspiration from that palace with its expensive glass panels. Finally, we headed to the top floor, the Great Hall, which was by far the most impressive room in the entire castle. Three silver lion statues were guarding the Queen's throne, made of noble tusk and silver. Having seen all three floors in the castle, we then headed into the basement, which was filled with sculptures, weapons and wine. What else would you be hiding in your basement? And in the middle of the room was a gilt war game. It kind of looked like a game of chess with small chess pieces, but these were actually figurines to represent all of the different types of people in battle so that the young crown prince could practice his battle strategy. Slightly further into the basement was the ivory and amber room. Now this was certainly one of the most impressive rooms we'd seen alongside the Great Hall. 
It contained objects carved out of ivory, such as a battleship, ornate pendants and miniatures, chalices and figurines. And just when we thought it didn't get any more impressive than that, we stumbled upon the crown jewels. This was so impressive and I was actually really surprised at how close up we could get to the crown. There were actually a set of steps that you could climb up so that you could view the crown from all angles. And just looking at the crown, it looked extremely heavy. I have no idea how the monarch would have worn this on their head for long periods of time. Sorry, the wind affected my vlog once again. Copenhagen is a really windy city, so you're just going to have to bear with me and my voiceovers. But I basically said that we were given these really cool maps that flip out depending on the room you're in. And they also include this really long timeline, which I want to show you all. Okay. Yeah, the we wind is really not helping. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's like a timeline that runs through it as well. Sure. So it's really good. Um, seeing that, reading about the history. The tour guides were really helpful as well. They were dotted around, so they were telling us little factual bits. Um, and I must admit, the highlight of the entire visit was definitely the crown. Um, the crown jewels, they were really impressive. They're hidden, hidden down in the basement. Um, and also the room with the thrones in, that was a big highlight as well. That was really, really cool. Such a, a large space, like the ivory sculptures, like the detail that they've put into everything is just so impressive. The jewels, there was this one ring that really stood out to me as well when we were down in the treasury looking at the crown, um, with like a ladybird on it as well, which was really cool. Like the attention to detail, yeah. I really appreciate that. Now we're just kind of sitting on the grass. Harrison is having a bit of a nap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> waiting for the rest of the group to join us. And then I think we're heading to Thule. Is that how you pronounce it, Tim? Yes. I did say it earlier on, I wasn't sure if I'd gotten it right or not, if it around to correct me, but yes, Chuli Amusement Park, but maybe a quick bite to eat as well because it is lunchtime. Um, yeah, that's been our morning.